Hey everyone! In my last video, I mentioned that I wanted to cover alternative models in this new Stable Diffusion video. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, and we're also going to talk about textual inversion, which is the process of adding new things to your models. And well, maybe not necessarily to your models anymore. Through examples, we're going to show some trailblazing technology that's going to give some mixed results if I'm being honest, but it's going to show you some of the power of Stable Diffusion, and what a lot of these awesome programmers have been able to put together so far. When the novel AI leak happened, a lot of people were excited because they felt like that was a better model than the regular Stable Diffusion model. Today I also plan to show you that that may not necessarily be the case. But without getting into all the gory technical details, we can suffice it to say that models are only as good as the material that's used to train them. Models were originally the only thing that was used to output images and then eventually new technologies were created. New layers, new functionality. Extremely technical people in the audience will realize that I am dumbing this down to the level at which I understand it, because this is very complicated stuff. The regular stable diffusion model is big. It's based on like two point something billion images. And you've probably already noticed a lot of stuff comes out looking painterly or like works of art. It emulates what it's seen because that was the data that was used to train it. There was a model trained using anime images from the Danburu library, and that was called waifu diffusion. And that's going to be the first alternative model that we'll talk about today. I'll include a link in the description to Hugging Face, which you're already familiar with if you've been following my videos. It was the place we went to download the original Stable Diffusion checkpoint. They now have a library of different models, including Waifu Diffusion and a few others. And if you want to download and use some of these, a lot of them are plug and play. In the last Stable Diffusion Tips video, we used a portrait of a redhead by Casey Baugh to show off the new high res fix feature. In today's example, we're going to use the same prompt, but we're actually just going to change the model out to the Waifu Diffusion model. If you're using the most recent version of Stable Diffusion's web UI by Automatic, in the upper left corner, you'll now have a drop-down menu where you can actually see the model you're using and switch it out if you have multiple. As a warning, this is a model to stay away from if you're trying to avoid explicit images. In some ways, it feels like it was trained to create explicit images, so be very careful how and what you prompt with. One thing that I think this makes very apparent is you can see a more stylized look that gets applied to the alternative model. And compared to the novel AI model, now these are different seeds, different steps, so it's not exact one-to-one -one comparison, but you can certainly see there's a very big stylistic difference. And not that we're completely done talking about models in general, but that really segues us nicely into what I wanted to talk about, which is embeddings and also hypernetworks. Now, based on what I've read, hypernetworks have been around for a while, Novel AI was the first to kind of bring them into the diffusion process, from what I understand. And that's one of the biggest reasons that a lot of their images look very samey, but very, very stylized. On top of the fact that Novel AI also had a different base model, they were also using hypernetworks, and that's what you're seeing here. When Novel AI's code was leaked, our tool was changed so that it could support those hypernetworks. And for a small amount of time, we only had that ability. Now we can create our own hypernetworks, and we actually have something new called embeddings. I know that these are strange looking images, but if they're the first time you're seeing anything like this and you're in this stable diffusion space, these are probably about to get really popular. Embeddings are an ingenious way of storing data in the form of a picture, and we as individuals can now train our own embeddings, meaning each of us can now create embeddings and trade them with each other if we choose. I can send my computer to work, training on a folder full of files, and then drop this picture into my Discord, and everyone could benefit. So now that you know a little bit about what they are and how they work, do they work well? And well, that's, that's uh, questionable at the moment. Let me show you a little bit about what I've learned so far, show you how to train up some images, and if you can manage to get better images than I can, I am very much looking forward to some tips in the comments. What we need to start with is a folder full of images, and we need very specific criteria to be met. From my experimentation, we definitely want to stay away from text. It really throws things off. Also, we're going to need the images to be exactly 512 by 512. But I came across a really cool website that makes that whole process a dream. And now we're going to go to this website, which is called Beer Me. And if it's not pronounced that way, it should be. But this is a bulk image resizing tool and you can grab your entire folder full of files and drop them all at once. With your images, remember that quality is far better than quantity. This is all free without any kind of login or anything. And you grab these little squares until they're maneuvered into the right way. You can organize for format. You can choose to rename them. Just follow the directions on the screen. It's very easy. And then save everything all at once as a zip file. 
Now I warn you about being exact with what I say because at any given time this project could change, but as of right this moment you want to click on the tab that says train, you want to click create embedding, you want to give your embedding a name, and you want to give it something to use as initialization text. We're only going to be able to make this come to life if we prompt for it, and so what we type here is going to be the prompt word. Definitely don't use something that you're going to use for other things. If it's unique, you can use one word, but you can also use things like underscores and hyphens if you want. And when you're ready, you just want to click on the train button. You might find the default settings to be insane, so I would step it down. I wouldn't do maybe more than 10,000 or 20,000 steps for your very first attempt. Choose your embedding at the top, fill in the boxes of course, and train your embedding. It takes a long time, and the steps are very important here. Every so often, it'll generate an image as an example, and it'll also generate an embedding that you could choose to share if you want. However, even if you interrupt this right away, or if you let the whole thing finish, you should be able to use the keyword right away. You don't have to touch those files if you don't want to. Right now what I'm banking on is that Stable Diffusion really does do better with the human form. I think it was a lot about the training data that was used to put it all together. Portraits work really well, for example, and there's more paintings of people than there are dogs. So it stands to reason I would do a lot better training on pictures of a person. But finding a person who doesn't have likeness rights and, you know, all of that, I mean, that seems... Oh, wait, there is one guy. As long as they're... Dude, I don't, I don't give a fuck about IP, any of that shit. As long as they're not, like, one, portraying me in a bad light, two, uh, linking back to my Twitch and my original YouTube, three, specifying that they're an unaffiliated channel, I don't have an issue with it. Cool. Not only am I unaffiliated with Hassan, he has absolutely no idea who I am. But that sounds like a green light to me, so let's go ahead and train a folder full of Hassan and see what we end up with. Now, there's some pretty decent pictures in there if you're great at pausing, but I'm extremely impressed when I go through the output using my normal methods. For these, I use the high res features we've talked about. I've used Face Restore, and I'd only ended up training about 13,000 steps to produce these results. And like we talked about earlier in the video, the embedding token is something that can be shared. Now, with respect to Hassan, I won't be just sharing it publicly. But I will say, in my admittedly limited experimentation, I wasn't really able to do much advanced stuff. For example, I tried to make him ride a horse, and it failed miserably. But the biggest difference between what we learned here today together, and what novel AI or other people are doing, is really just the amount of steps that we put into it. More steps, theoretically, should result in better stuff. Now, you might be asking, can we mix embeddings? And I have great news for you. Yes, we can. Thank you to the guy on Reddit who shared the Victorian lace. That's actually what got me started on this whole embedding thing. And in all seriousness, Hassan, thank you for being an unwilling and unwitting model in my, uh, my little video here. As we saw here, these keys can be really powerful. And in the future, who knows what we can do in the world of AI. Anyway, for those of you who made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate your time with me here today. And as always, thanks for watching.